I mean, an interesting question I'll throw out to you actually is, what was what do you think was the most challenging doctrine to teach? What caused the most reaction amongst the crowd during class? What was it like? Oh, they're not going to take this well. What was it for you? A food for the gods. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> food for, have we even spoken about food for the gods on this podcast? No, because the first is thinking woman is God. Was that? Yeah, that's what that's where my mind went. Woman is God. The genetic kiss doctrine and image of the beast as well. Image of the beast, but we'll come back to food for the gods. We'll come back to food for the gods. But image I of was the... kind of on your way because I yeah. knew you went, but if I had to answer honestly. Yeah, it's like, because yeah. food for the gods was yeah. mad. Yeah. Because to, to sum it up very quickly, you learned that some of the beings in your in your religious stories was 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 out here eating people. Okay, there's another way to say it. So we're going to do a segment on food for the gods. We have to now because you no, brought it up. No, no. I'm See sorry, what you did? I'm sorry. Now you're going to traumatize the people. <laughs> you're going to traumatize the people. Image of the Beast. I found Image of the Beast and Genetic Kiss just because of the reactions. I think going up there as, as well as a as a man as well, as a male teacher, had, was an interesting dynamic in teaching topics like Image of the Beast and topics like Genetic Kiss because some of the lines Bubba would drop about Genetic Kiss. He was like, remember, remember, remember when he put out the update and he said, yeah, listen, man. If you if you've if you've been with more than four men as a woman, you're a witch now. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, damn. And and obviously in this world, you have a lot of women. Who, <laughs> that's a that's a good week for them. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> not not our women. <laughs> we behave over here in our tribe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying in general. This this you know you know the way the Western world <laughs> behaves. You know. Four men is not that many at all. So you have a situation where a lot of people have been with more than, than four men. And it was trying to deliver the doctrine in terms of, because it's a scientific doctrine. Again, it's all about the DNA being in your system, how long it stays in a woman's body, so on and so forth. And it's not used to shame anyone. It's not used to berate anyone. It's you. It's just used to teach. And that was what we always were. When we were in class, we were teachers. We weren't preachers. We weren't judges. We weren't judges. We weren't judging anyone. We weren't condemning anyone. We were just teaching. Yeah, that's what we always were. Mm. Not everyone, though, I will say. Well, there say. you go. Then that caused the problem. Because mm. the facts don't care about your feelings. There you to go. To be honest. But some people would like to weaponize the facts. Yes, exactly. They like to use it as weapons. They have their own personal issues. Yeah. So, so you had a lot of situations where you had men who had issues with women for whatever reason, whatever they've been through in life. And when that doctrine dropped, they were like, yes. And they, they grabbed that and yeah. they ran straight to, to whoever they could find. It's said, listen, look here. Look, it says you're a hoe. So <laughs> you're like, damn. So you had that situation. So I found that dynamic in class interesting because when you're teaching that doctrine, you're teaching it from the perspective of, always from the perspective of, hey, the next generation, let's teach them right. Yeah. So then, I mean, it's not a case of, hey, there's no hope for, for the older generation or anything like that. But a lot of it was like, okay, when you know better, you do better, right? So let's make sure the next generation of people, because there's different different sides of different stories, um, have the doctrine so that they have the information to to go about their life in a in a in a better way. And by generation, each generation we improve. But the dynamic, because of what you just mentioned, mm -hmm. in coming up there and teaching the doctrine, I found it always had to be almost measured in how you deliver it. Make sure you're delivering it with kindness, but with, with, with no judgment at all. And just saying, li listen, the scientific facts when it comes to genetic kiss, and then the scientific facts in terms of the difference be differences between men and women, because there are differences. Mm -hmm. Women are internal beings. We know this, women carry the children. So that's, and that's really what the most crucial thing about it is, because what Barbara explained is that when you're dealing with foreign DNA being in your system, that can have an effect on any child that you go on to have. Men, we don't fashion. We don't fashion anyone. We don't have a womb. So in that sense, you're not responsible for anything intermingling. Not responsible in that sense. Not that you're not responsible because as a man, and that's the thing about the doctrine, when you learn this, it should change the way women behave, but also the way men behave because we now have to be careful what we're doing. We can't just go out around it about- It should hold us all to a certain standard. It should standard. hold us all to a certain standard. But when you're delivering it, you're delivering the science of it. And so at a stage, it becomes more focused on women and you you're interested to see the reaction of them when you drop certain things so some of them are like obviously they know what they've been through in their past and they're like 
so, what, so that's it for me? That's what you're saying? And it's like, no, 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 we're not. No one's saying that. So yeah. I found that. Yeah, that was very true. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. I we did find that a lot. Yeah. People... I remember one particular geneticist class, some women started to panic. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. had to be like, well, no, wait, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, it's, it's over for me. That's no, like, no. <laughs> it's definitely been more than four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so they're panicking and they're like, that's it. It's done. But it was just like, no, don't panic. Let's just, let's just learn. Let's just learn together as a tribe and grow. And then generation by generation will improve. And so geneticist doctrine, image of the beast doctrine was interesting because I just find, again, it's about dynamics. When you're talking about image a lot, I feel there's more focus on women than there is on man. Mm. Women do different things with their hair. Not that men don't, but it's more focused on when a woman does it. Women do different things with their makeup and so on and so forth. So the image of the beast where you're talking about a doctrine where we're like, we always came from the perspective where it's like, remind us that we are beautiful in our natural state. Because that's the main thing. There's different reasons why... People do different things. There's different reasons, I guess, why you straighten your hair. There's different reasons why you might mess around with your nose or so on and so forth. I think it's quite clear if you're bleaching your skin, you know why you're doing that. But there's different reasons why people do different things. But it was addressing it from the psychological point of view where it's just like, me personally, in my experience, I never would tell a woman how to dress or what to wear or how to do your hair or so on and so forth. I, I kind of took the approach of just remind you how beautiful you are in your natural state I yeah that, and that was my approach to it i was like i was just going to remind you oh yeah I think look at I that agree. afro yeah <laughs> that's wonderful I yeah i agree with that yeah. approach and i think the great thing about baba's doctrine is it gets to the root of things like i always say things to do with our appearance or mm. how we see ourselves how we present ourselves those are more symptoms than anything there you go so you're going at someone for the way they wear their hair or you know how they cover their insecurities mm. but it's more a symptom of a bigger cause there you go of you know how we haven't been taught to love ourselves how we've been, how we've been conditioned within the system so we have to get to the root of that and things will follow it's not that you maybe you're with a girl and you're like I don't mess with girls who wear their hair straight. Mm. And so then she goes natural. You haven't made her love herself. You haven't yeah. cured the overall thing. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So it's that understanding that, exactly that. It's, it's that, to the core of it is that to make sure that we understand that we've been turned against ourselves fundamentally. Mm -hmm. And so the image of the beast, the image of the beast is a great actual fact. And Baba goes into different things there, but he goes into a lot. What you see in the industry, in the entertainment industries, or what we see on the screen, is a reluctance, to put it lightly, to show us or display us in our original form. So anytime you went, especially for a certain age, a certain period of time, if we're if we're famous, we look a certain way. We're adhering to European beauty standards mm -hmm. in, to determine our beauty, right? So we're straightening our, our hair based on the fact that we don't, Afros aren't accepted. We're doing whatever we're doing to our skin and so on and so forth based on that self-hatred. When you deal with bleaching of the skin, for me, that's the most one of the most obvious ones because it's like you know you're just not happy because your skin's too dark and that's mm -hmm. self-hatred right so it goes into various things i advise every anyone and everyone to read that book but certainly i always approach it that way when you're delivering the class though you gotta deliver the class and again baba will say certain things it's facts but he will say certain things so you're there i remember coming like beginning of beginning of the class you're kind of looking out at the crowd like oh man. <laughs> seeing who's there some women there are sitting there like hmm okay i dare you say that say that <laughs> say that i dare you know i can be like that but they're in the image of the beast sitting in the crowd so you know you're sweating you're, you're trembling a little bit i remember one particular class i was with Retu was talking was doing image of the beast because see most of the time <laughs> we left those topics to to you guys to the to the feminines um and was like yes better deliver this better coming from a feminine and obviously you guys were great teachers quality we ain't forgotten about the quality <laughs> so you guys were great teachers so so and certain things were just better coming but there were a couple of times where it's like no we've got to deliver the information and it's on us like, whether it was me rep two when we was in our triad or, or whatnot and you're looking out of the crowd and you're, you're you're looking at each other like yeah you good he's like yeah yeah you good i'm like yeah yeah yeah, i'm good <laughs> all right let's, let's do this <laughs> see a bead of sweat drop down your chin all of that body shaking and like nah but but then you go out and you deliver it and and and, and i found it usually those two would be that side woman is god 
will be the other side. Woman is God. The men weren't trying to hear it. Yes, yeah. I remember the first time delivering that and the men. I always do that impression. I never forget that African guy. What is this? Woman, woman is, is God. Yeah, he I was, have never heard this. He was not <laughs> trying to hear it. He was stunned. I remember he was stunned, but to his credit, <laughs> he continued to come yeah. to class, but he was stunned that day. He left in a daze. <laughs> he was left in a daze. And that was obviously, again, it's interesting because I'm sure, sure that particular person was coming from an Islam background mm. and coming in and found the knowledge and found the doctrine. And, and up to that point was just like, wow, this is amazing. Wow, extraterrestrial stars, existence. Oh, this is amazing. And then woman was gone. He was like, what? <laughs> Where are you going with this? <laughs> so, but what do you mean women came before men? What do you mean? It can't be, but it's interesting the perspective because I think I found with the woman is God doctrine, people come at it from a religious perspective, right? So when you say woman is God, we're dealing a lot with the science of it. If you're coming from a religious perspective, you're then thinking about this omnipresent, all powerful, all knowing, all loving being, and the the thought that being could possibly be a woman <laughs> frightens a lot of men. Like what? No, no, no. The all knowing God that I pray to, there's no way, there's no way that's a woman. But you got to think, why does it frighten you? Well, there you that's go. That's what I always say about these men online going off. Like, oh, we need the men and this, and mm. with spark and sperm, and yeah. you know, that's when we go enough in the comments. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, well, why is it so bad to acknowledge women going first? What what does it mean to you? Yeah. Like, what 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 makes you afraid to admit? Yeah, yeah, and it, and it's got to stem from some form of some form of um insecurity, H- insecurity or, or, or hatred, or hatred, yeah. or so on and so forth. And that's not what we're about. It's never what we've been about in our original culture, our original way of life. It was all about propping up the woman, never pushing. We her all back. came from a woman, yeah, so it's go. like. But it's a scientific doctrine again. So women predate men. X chromosomes predate Y chromosomes. The women are the mothers, the nurturers, the fashioners. They have the womb. They fashion us inside that womb. And they they pass and hold the mitochondrial DNA. So when we're dealing with this, we're giving you the scientific. We're giving you the facts. This is what it is. Even from a religious standpoint, if anyone's the closest to being omnipresent, it's your mother. Yeah, you <laughs> you just, yeah. Your mother just knows something about yeah. you. Or she she knew something like, you weren't even there. How do you know? And they're like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mullah hit me with that a couple of times. <laughs> I'm there walking in the house like, yeah, so she has no idea. <laughs> and one day she'll just bring something up. And you're like, oh, oh, you knew that? Oh, that's oh, crazy. That's crazy. Okay, so <laughs> it was that, it's that. So the Baba Yanon always deals with the science. We always, as teachers, deal with the science. We're not preachers, we're teachers. Okay, we don't attempt to convert you we attempt to teach you what you do with that knowledge is up to you and that's always the way it was in class we had so many people from different walks of life just come into class we're never going to join the tribe Mm. we're never going to join the organization but we're coming to class nonetheless for the information for the outformation we're just like i need to learn so we teach and that's our jobs um and that's our jobs on this on this planet so to be so to speak to be student teachers but that particular doctrine was always interesting because yeah men didn't like it at all and you had to ask yourselves why but when you deal with it from a scientific point of view there's nothing you can argue with it just is what it is women have more dna it is what it is we're talking on the physical realm women have more dna they're more complete that's just what it is and so you move on but those would have would be the three i would point to before food for the gods i'd point to <laughs> image of the beast genetic kiss and woman is god those were the f- the three that I can remember that people reacted to the most, sometimes in a panic, sometimes in a disagreement. Um, but it was very difficult to disagree with us in class. That's what I will say, because we we delivered it with a certain, you know, class where it's like, it's science. I, I didn't make it like this. I didn't make woman, woman God. I didn't do that personally. <laughs> That's just what it is. Just you know, what it is. Just what it is. Relax. <laughs> Relax, it's all good. And so... Yeah, image of the beast. I think was the one was one of those that was on my mind because I was just like, yeah, that was that was tough delivering, not just in class, but I think generally in life, women weren't really trying to hear a man talking about, oh, you're you're, you're doing that and you're doing this because you're damaged and so on and so forth. Um, so I always approached it, if I approached it at all, um, because often women I was encountering, I was just like, yeah, hey, do you, do you? If I'm teaching the actual fact, I'm a teacher, but do you? But if, I'm, if I was going to approach it from any way, it would just be to remind us and even sometimes reassure certain people who maybe have the insecurities. Because when you're dealing with insecurities 
in that term, as far as your image, that I can accept because the world for a long time has told us we don't look good, has told our women you our natural African features aren't good, where we know that that's a complete lie. We know that most other people on the planet are trying to look like us, ironically, trying to change things up to match our features. Then you see them secretly worshipping our features, especially if they manifest <laughs> anywhere else but us. So features that you traditionally uh, um, associate with Africans or people of African descent, if it turns up anywhere else, suddenly it's like, wow, <laughs> amazing. Mm. you know so we so we know that so we know what's happening in the world so i can accept that you might be insecure if you have if you're dark skinned you have traditional african features and you've been plugged into their world their their matrix their displays you're going to start to question you know things on that level and so i'll just reassure you right now we're the most beautiful we're the best we do what we do and so i come at it from that way um but i agree completely it, certain doctrines can always be weaponized it can always be weaponized right you know, depends on, on on where you're personally coming from, right? Or, or who hurt you, as we say. So I get that. But yeah, yeah, just an interesting one that I thought I'd throw out there. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs>